uh, this is a different topic as well. So the whole country is here, and as you can see, we have uh, three different regions with Galapagos 4. We have the Amazonian lowland, the coast lowland, and the um, uh, mountains here, the mountain cordillera, which are mainly by metamorphic mountains. I have to say it like this, there are many volcanoes, we have more than 250 volcanoes, uh, of which 18 are active, and some historically, some, some 8 or 10, 7, 18, I, will, I have it uh, summarized as soon. And what I say always at the conferences, even in front of the president, of the ministers and so on, this country shouldn't be called Ecuador. They look at me and this foreigner tells us for how, what, what the country should be called. I say that always it should be called Volcania. Mm -hmm. well, because this is a country where no Ecuadorian is born or dying in, in, in the visibility of any kind of volcano. That means everybody is in the visibility of any kind of volcano here. As I said, 250 volcanoes. Now, if we make a certain uh, uh, summary of, of that, what I said and what I didn't say, we have 18 continental volcanoes which are active, considered as being active, more than 250 in total, and they are distributed in four different volcanic calderas or volcanic chains, or we call them also sometimes arcs. We have, uh, well, about this a little bit later because now it, it makes no sense to show you everything. Uh, seven of them had uh, volcanic activity in the last uh, 500 years. Ten of them are, um, are monitored, and something what people should always notice that uh, no type of monitoring can predict volcanic explosions. Not here, not in the States, not Japan, not in Italy. So now uh, a picture from north to south. Um, here is Colombia, and down there is Peru. This is Cotopaxi. Now this is of course a, a vertically exaggerated image, so that you can see a little bit more the, uh, the uh, landscape itself. Here's the western volcanic caldera, mm -hmm. with uh, many volcanoes, many of them are active, like here the volcanic complex of Pichincha. This morning coming here with a taxi, I've seen a huge fumarole of more three, of 300 meters. It's an active volcano, this one. Here's Quito. Uh, here's some other volcanoes there uh, on mm -hmm. the northern uh, border with, uh, with Colombia. This caldera park, as I said, and here we have a second volcanic caldera, which is the Inter-Indian Valley volcanic caldera. Then we have the Eastern Volcanic Caldera here, and a new one which is just starting to become a Volcanic Caldera is here, the so-called Sub-Andean or Sub-Andean Volcanic Caldera. There we have also some volcanoes which are very active and give us uh, uh, a lot of uh, trouble a few years ago. Here we have the most dangerous volcano which we probably will see from far. In fact, when you don't see something, there it is. It's a flat volcano like Yellowstone. It's a mini super volcano. We call it Chalupas. And to give you an idea, because we are going to go today at Cotopaxi, this is Cotopaxi, and here is a huge caldera, or super volcano, it's, it's of course very flat, uh, intruded by some other uh, volcano, which is extinct, but this one is active. And uh, this has a diameter of 15 to 20 kilometers, called Chalupas. Um, a little bit on the basics, I, I think you know, but still, uh, we have um, uh, convection cells in the upper part of the upper mantle, which, uh, through their force, uh, force magma coming up, uh, um, perforating the oceanic crust, and having here uh, the plates uh, uh, moving uh, apart from each other on a divergent plate boundary. When the uh, uh, oceanic plate um, crushes against the continental plate, the uh, denser one, not the heavier one, the denser one, dives below the continental plate that's remelted here, simulated in the upper mantle through the high heat. Uh, but some parts which are uh, less dense come upwards and sometimes up to the surface and therefore we have the volcanoes. Of course the process is called uh, subduction. And, um, and here we have of course a, a convergent plate boundary. Um, through this kind of process of subduction and uh, generation of uh, volcanoes we have the so-called ring of fire all around uh, the Pacific in the western United States, in Central America, and the western part of the uh, of South America, and of course allusions uh, to here to uh, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, Galapagos is very different, it's uh, similar to uh, uh, Hawaii, but about this some other time. Due to this kind of uh, distribution of uh, plate boundaries, uh, we have different plates, these are the most important ones. Of course, uh, there are many, many, many more plates, and I will give you also paper uh, to read through about the many microplates we have, and one of them we are, we're going to talk, that's not very known, there are only two papers about this, I don't know why, but uh, it's the Galapagos microplate, which is on the 
northwestern side of the Galapagos Islands. And about the Galapagos uh, origin, we're going to talk also a lot because in your guide there's not that much uh, information. You will see what I'm talking about. Now, what is also important for us here, and now for you here on this hotel, is uh, the third type of plate boundary, which is a transform plate boundary, like this one. Okay, the other ones we discussed in here. Of course, any kind of movement provokes seismic activity. And we have the uh, primary wave, we have the secondary wave, we have the uh, love wave, and we have the... Uh, therefore, I will give it to you in PowerPoint. Otherwise, in PDF, you are not going to see this. Um, and the error wave. And there are two more, but uh, what I want to tell you here is that we have the problem that um, uh, the distribution of the plates here gives us a lot of headache. And, and you are here only one night, but we never know when it's going to happen, that what's going to happen. When we talk about the different plates here, um, we talk about the uh, Nazca plate, the Cocos, the Pacific plate, and here's of course one missing, we're going to see it soon. And we have here on the continent another two plates, the Caribbean and the South American. And uh, here we have the East Pacific Rise, which is a diversion plate boundary, the Galapagos Spreading Center, also a diversion plate boundary. Here the, uh, the uh, Nazca South American uh, Trench, which is a convergent plate boundary, and therefore, because the Nazca plate goes below the South American continent, uh, we have the uh, different volcanoes here. But we have the problem also that the South American continent is divided into two continental plates, and they are separated by a transform plate boundary. The same thing like San Andres Fault, absolutely the same. But there it's called just San Andres Fault, and here it's called Guayaquil Caracas Mega Fault. That means we have here a much bigger issue than the people have in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Now if we see a little bit in detail, this is our own. Uh, I, I publish a lot of things uh, for the public, so uh, many of the uh, graphics you're going to see, you have never seen, you, you will never see, except if you buy in the future when we publish in 100 years in the next book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these things um, are showing a little more in detail what is going on. Uh, the same thing like before, a little bit separated from each other, seeing the movement of the plates, and, and here this kind of movement, here the Galapagos, and here we have the, the other thing which we are going to talk about by tomorrow and in the next days. I don't know. But here we have a triple junction of, uh, of plates, the Cocos, the Nazca and the Pacific plate. And then we have another micro plate which is also important for some other considerations for the Galapagos. But what is important is this thing here. The transform plate boundary of the Caribbean plate and the South American plate. And uh, this of course, something we can see, it was caught up to 2004 the Dolores Guayaquil Mega Fault or Mega Shear, but it has been changed because the Dolores fault system in, in, uh, in uh, Venezuela has nothing to do with the whole fault system, so it's uh, now renamed in uh, uh, Guayaquil uh, Caracas. Now here what you can see are different ages, years, when we have had a very huge earthquake along this fault. And the last one, and this is the problem, was 1859. Now if the last one was 1859, let me see where it comes, I will say it soon, <coughs> after the pizza, um, is that uh, we have a certain reoccurrence. As you know, with pilo-seismic research, we could find out what is the real reoccurrence of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of this uh, reactivation of this fault. As we have only data of the last 500 years, so the only thing we can say is that we have every 100 years, we have a big earthquake here in Quito. We talk about Quito. And this is a very vulnerable zone. This hotel is very vulnerable, just in case. Thank uh you. -huh.